Mm-hmm. Um, that'd be the best thing. But it's all kids always do dumb things where they're like, it's like, hey, your tendon hurts, and they're like, what? What? Let me see your training history, and it's like, okay, there's a huge spike in load, and they're like, yeah, I, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> well, it's yeah. obvious. It's so obvious. I read a study that was saying like. 80% of Achilles tendinopathy cases can be traced back to a um, huge uh, workload spike. It's like 80%, that's pretty big. Yeah. Um, but then, so yeah, you, you mentioned the tendon ruptures. The only time that I've seen people that I know, like NBA players, high level basketball players rupture something, it's because they fell out of the rotation. So they they were playing and then all of a sudden they're not playing and then they went back to playing. Or they had some patella tendinopathy or Achilles tendinopathy and they just rested it and then they went back to playing their normal amount of minutes and then a rupture occurs. It's the only, I've never seen it happen where they stay ready, they stay in shape, they play the right amount of basketball and it still ruptures, Mm -hmm. never seen it. I think we were saying that term calibration earlier, earlier uh, today. Yeah. And I think that's what it is. It's because they, the, the tendon world so, I hate when they talk about tendon strength and tendon stiffness because measuring tendon stiffness is there's many different ways and it's never well controlled Mm -hmm. to see if it's increasing or decreasing. And I'm like, I think by the time you're 17, your skeletal and mature, your tendon stiff, it's ready to go. And then it's like, okay, I ruptured my tendon or I developed tendinopathy. Is it because you lost stiffness? No, it was, it was good. It was some other reason. Um, and I think it's the calibration because the tendon is kind of this stupid connective tissue. It's not, there's not much, um, innervation with the tendon. You know how you can control your muscle with your brain. You can contract your muscle. You can't sit here and contract your tendon. Um, so it's responding to the muscle and it's responding to the, the bone end. So it's just like this guy that is subject to what's happening at the muscle, what's happening at the bone. And I think when you take time off, I mean, you know, it. the calibration, you're calibrating your movements goes out the window. Yeah. You don't know how to, you were like, you kind of don't move as well. And I think because the tendon is just a stupid connective tissue, it takes up the load that you're not able to like maybe take with the muscle mm. or maybe your bones are in a, in a, in a bad position. And the tendon is just this middle guy who takes the brunt of it. Um, yeah. it's the same thing when you take rest and you get delayed onset muscle soreness. I would have to assume that you're getting similar effects at the tendon. It's just that it might be a little slower to develop a pain in the tendon. Um, but the muscle is so sensitive. How like if you change loads, like you haven't lifted in a long time, you play actually you haven't played basketball in a month. You go play basketball for an hour. You can't even walk the next day because yep. you're so sore. And I'm like, you feel the sensitivity in your muscle. A lot of people aren't developing tendon pain, but I bet you you're getting some uh, damage to your tendon because the calibration's off. And yep. that's where it's just like, keeping in the activity that you want to do in some in some form keeping it in all the time i think it keeps your body well calibrated so that you're not getting you're not getting unnecessary loads on your tendon yeah